Nathan, welcome back and happy new year, brother, to season five of the Curious Ulsterman. Happy new year, Johnny. Thank you. I mean, what a dream. We five are the dream seasons team. in. At least yeah. in my in, in my head, we're the dream team. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm looking forward to this one because we're going to be discussing crossing the Rubicon, which for a lot of you people who don't know, that is quite a common saying. Uh, for is. a point of no return, a point of significance. Um, mm. Usually at this point, I would go on a spiel, but for once we have a non-official historical expert um, <laughs> in our co-host, the Jolly Viking. So Nathan, <laughs> um, for those you know, folks just coming out of university or just starting out in the adulthood, they've potentially heard the name Caesar, know it's got something vaguely to do with Rome, potentially never heard you know the common saying of you know crossing the rubicon or you'll be crossing the rubicon if you do that so give some context to this conversation before we before we kick off with some actionable steps that the audience can take away sure yeah so um julius caesar was a um a a roman senator and general um who led a not insignificant army um from northern italy um, over the Alps and into um, into what was then Gaul, now parts of modern day France and Belgium, and and basically just waged a, an unbelievable, horrendous war <laughs> against the Gauls um, purely for the crime of existing. Um, it's uh, it's barbaric and brutal. Um, some people reckon that, that nearly a million people. Um, would have died as a result of, of Caesar's wars in in Gaul. Um, uh, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. And, and it just shows the, the change in times. Now he would be deemed a war criminal. Back then he was a hero. Uh, you know, times change. Uh, <laughs> but he, um, but he, he, in the process of winning these wars, he um, he ended up making enemies with the political elite in in Rome, um, who wanted him to stand down. Who wanted him to quit and stop. Um, but Caesar wasn't content with just stomping all over goals. Um, he also wanted to be, um, he wanted to own Rome. He wanted to be, you know, the, the, the Lord of Rome. Um, and, and this is, you know, like it's, it's, it's strange because his name becomes synonymous with the emperors, but, but Julius Caesar, the OG was never an emperor. (laughs) He was never an emperor, which is kind of a, you know, he never quite made it. I think, um, so he, he was uh, so yeah. It's kind of interesting that that's what happened. But he he starts going back to Rome with his army, and the Senate are sending him letters and messengers, and and even senators are going out and meeting him and telling him to stand down and to um, disband his legions and all these things, and uh, and he ignores them and just keeps on heading south, heading towards Italy and heading towards Rome, um, and he crosses the Alps and all this, and he keeps going. And, and there's there's a river in in northern Italy called the Rubicon, and and in Roman tradition, because a lot of their wars had been against the Gauls, um, when a Roman soldier crossed the river, crossed the Rubicon, um, they were no longer a soldier but now a private citizen, and they were supposed to no longer carry arms um, and 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 not march under a standard unless, of course, they were going to a triumph which is a very different thing. We won't go into that. We don't have time, don't need to. Um, but Julius Caesar, with his favourite legion, the 10th, um, crosses the Rubicon under arms and under, stand, under a standard, under his standard, um, to march on Rome. Um, and, and so whilst we're going to have a lovely chat about crossing the Rubicon and what that means for us, what we need to bear in mind is that Caesar committed a war crime, broke a bunch of law, laws that were you know, enshrined in Roman law, and also created a massive civil war. So we don't want to encourage our listeners to do any of those three things. Yeah, please, please do not do those things. Yeah, we're please, not, please we're not condoning com- that behaviour. Yeah, <laughs> don't, don't commit a war crime in the name of the Curious Ulsterman. Yeah. Um, but what we are, I think what, you, what we're trying to get is, is that there's a point of no return in all of our lives, which will be the making of us. Um, and, in, and, in, and in many respects, Caesar crossing that line and, and doing that is what led to him ultimately winning, but also the fact that for thousands of years afterwards, rulers in Europe were known as Caesars. So like your you know, Kaisers in Germany, the Tsars in Russia, all those names, and there are other kings, you know, come from the title Caesar, you know, um, and so there's, 
you know, like he, that one decision to cross this, and it's not only, it's not like a massive river, you know, it's just it's just a, a sort of a, a a geographical reference point really for Rome, yeah. uh, you know, uh, but that one decision to do that impacted history in a way that is unbelievable. A hundred percent, yeah. And and it's kind of I think so. What what um, I think I, I don't want to steal your thunder. That what, what you're trying to do with this is the is there a point where you cross a line that will have a, an impact that goes beyond yourself? Yeah, and has and has such far-reaching impacts that yeah. sometimes you won't... Like, Caesar wasn't aware just how big of an impact that's had on history. Yeah, yeah. You know, so... Yeah. Yeah, wonder... had the Senate not elected to turn him into a tea bag, he might have known, but <laughs> <laughs> filled him so, filled so many holes, you know. For so. those of you interested in the history, do go uh do go and look it up. Um, it is all very interesting. However, I do wonder if in our lives we are it's I've said this before as well. I wonder if sometimes in our lives we don't realize the good we're ha- the good we're doing on a daily basis or by you know being consistent with our values and being consistent with doing some form of good in the world and not realizing the full implications of it in a positive way so Mm. by making consistently good decisions not only you your immediate family but potentially your community and the wider world will somehow benefit but it's kind of like charity i think i think you never really know the the how far it goes i think you see the immediate effect uh, but you know, if you you give someone some sort of charity, they're going to take that that goodness with them, and and that will carry over, so to speak, um, to the wider community. So, you know, while Caesar's intentions were, I'm I don't want to go, I don't want to say they're evil, I don't want to say they're bad. I don't, like, at the time, there's a lot of historical context we're missing out here. There's a lot of nuances that we're not yeah. discussing. Yeah. You're right. He broke a lot of state laws and committed war crimes and caused the civil war. That's all very bad. That's pretty clear cut. That's pretty bad. However, <laughs> as you said, he impacted history in a way that is almost unbelievable. Like one man crossing a river symbolically and the actions it took thereafter created such a huge impact that even today, you know, his life is studied, his uh, policies are studied, his, you know, so. I, I think a lot of people as an individual underestimate the effect they can have on the world. They think, oh, I'm just Joe Blogs. I just go to my desk. I just go do my normal day job. I sit in traffic. Mm-hmm. I do this. I do that. I'm not making any real impact on this world. I think yeah. you can have an impact on the world if you choose to. You yeah. know, as you yeah. said before very well, that there was multiple times that Caesar could have turned back, could have, I'm sure Caesar... That took some balls to do that. Like, say yeah. what you like oh, about yeah. the man. It took some balls. And the amount of people, including his own soldiers, his own his own generals underneath him, probably telling him, boss, are you sure this is a good idea? You know, mm. and then the senators coming in and saying, look, you know the consequences if you fail. And, mm. you know, you could probably um, quote it better than me, but he said something along the lines of, let the die be cast and yes. cross yeah. the Rubicon anyway. So yeah. in my own mind, what I take from this story, and you could have a slightly different take on it, uh, is that my own perspective is that we could potentially have one main Rubicon in our life. It is the main roadblock in our life. I don't know whether that's for, for it's each to their own. It's like for someone, it could be a major career change. It could be choosing to get married. It could be choosing to start a business it could be whatever but i also think that while it may not be one there may not be one main rubicon in your life you think well my life's pretty all together and good for you i'm happy but perhaps there's areas of your life that you are facing a major major hurdle that you just you really need to make that decision to cross either that's in relationships your job uh family you know there's i think if we look at it objectively, we are faced with points of no return at certain points in our lives. These are our Rubicons, so to speak. And at some point you have to cross, choose to, sorry, no, you have to choose to cross them or shed away. And I'm not saying that's cowardly. Sometimes, you know, it is wise to perhaps not cross that Rubicon, that point of no return, especially if it's all or nothing. 
but sometimes yeah. it's worth everything. Um, and yeah. I think that with, with age comes, you know, the difference. Yeah. But then that's also why you need coaches and mentors, as we've previously referenced in this mm. podcast, who can say, yeah. who can be the senators with good intent, be the soldiers <laughs> and generals with good intent and say, yeah, 100% go for it. It's risky, but go for it. Or no, don't do it. But um, yeah. what are your thoughts, Nathan? I, I was just thinking then, I think that, you know, like <laughs> there are, you know, that there are probably ranging in scales from, you know, tiny Rubicons up to like kind of, you know, kind of gargantuan moments. And mm. I, I was just thinking like, so like one small Rubicon might be, you know, you, you're in a, in a, in a, in a nightclub with your pals and you, 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 know, you spot a, 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 an attractive man or woman across the thing. I, you know, I don't want to assume the gender of your listeners or who they're interested in. And, and do I go up and ask that person if they want to drink or they want to dance with me? Mm. That's a point of no return. It is. Because you, you, you're you taking a risk. You go up and you ask and they either say yes or they laugh in your face and and you lose, you know, and, and, and it's a point of no return. Or it's kind of, you know, um, like you say, you know, um, going for that job interview, accepting the job offer, setting up your own business, you know, um, proposing to your boyfriend or girlfriend to get married any of those things of Rubicons um, that, you know, you, you put yourself out there and you either succeed or you fail. Mm. And, and, and there's no kind of, you know, the, you know, for, for Caesar, the big point, point about that and the die being cast, there was no degrees of failure. He either won outright or lost outright. You know, there was no kind of like, well, a half won. Um, you know, and, and so for us, when, we, when we're talking about this crossing the Rubicon for how, how that how that practically looks for us, but, you know, I think it's those situations where it's kind of an all or nothing moment, mm. you know, um, and I think that that's kind of, and, and I don't, you know, I'm not trying to make it, I mean, there should be an element of it that does scare us um, because I think that that kind of that fear is is natural you know it's part of our it's what what's got humanity to, to the top of the chain yeah. the top of the pyramid <laughs> um and but it's how you react to that fear do you step back away from the banks of the river and go no let's not cross or do you wade in and come out the other side you know it's yeah, yeah but so. you've made me think that perhaps the key to winning the all or nothing battles like those pivotal moments in our lives of which there's probably only a handful perhaps the way to do that is by successfully crossing smaller rubicons with smaller consequences so for example you know if uh, that first example which i thought was a great one because it does instill fear in anyone who does it is going up and asking someone very attractive or who you perceive to be out of your league out for a drink, a dinner, you know, whatever, in a club or whatever. But the consequences of that are not life and death. You know, you might <clears throat> you might get rejected and then that's you might feel a little bit down for like five minutes, ten minutes, whatever. Your la your mates will pat you in the back and you know, whatever. At least you tried. At least you tried. Mm-hmm. Um and then you go back next Saturday night and you try again and you try again and try eventually someone's going to say yes and you know it, the 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 effort will be worth it so in that regard it's a small rubicon because it's a fearful river to cross but it, the consequences of it are not dangerous mm. however maybe moving to the next level of a, a a rubicon asking someone to marry you now while there is while there is a, a back out of that it is the amount of paperwork and emotional turmoil and just general grief that's going to cause to get divorced. There's a massive incentive. <laughs> There's a massive incentive to make it. It's all or nothing. We make this work. Um, you know, so that's a yeah. big Rubicon to cross. Do you ask your partner to marry you? Because there's so, I mean, that has very long reaching impacts and influences. Lifetime. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Literally. I mean, as I said before, you know, and as you said rightly as well, the effects of Caesar crossing the Rubicon are still felt today. So, you know, doing something as big as asking a partner, whoever that may be, to marry you, that's got the, the effects of that are going to be felt generationally. 
for better or for worse. Mm. And then, you know, for crossing the Rubicon um, uh, in a life or death scenario, I mean, off the top of my head, I don't know if this is a great example, but let's say you are a fireman, you know, and a big shout out to the fire service as well. I don't think we've actually given them a shout out in this podcast. You know, fantastic, you know. However, you know, I'm sure there has been scenarios in the past and probably the present and will be in the future where there's people trapped in a building on fire and it's that crossing the Rubicon moment of do you run into the building on fire and get them out where there's a serious chance you could probably die in the process or do you step back and then there's obviously running the risk that unfortunately then people die. You know, that's a pretty serious Rubicon. That's a this is all or nothing. Either there is total victory or there is nothing. And perhaps you can come up with a better example, but off the top of my head, when that's when I'm thinking the stakes are high, that, you know, this is life and death. That's, yeah. I think that that is when the confidence that yeah. we discussed, you know, in our last series, we discussed, you know, confidence, courage, you know, um, all them kinds of things. Mm. That's when it comes into play. But I feel that it also helps if you've crossed several Rubicons before, you know, I think people yeah. put a lot of pressure on themselves to, to have never, to, they've never practiced, they've never practiced crossing a small Rubicon. So when yeah, the big yeah. ones come, they're sort of paralyzed with fear that deer in headlights kind of thing. Yeah. But what do you think, Nathan? Yeah, I, I think it's good. I think this kind of arcs back to some of the conversations we've had before about, you know, like um, you, we don't always see the journey that someone's been on. We just see the finished product. A hundred percent. The overnight yeah. successes, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. And um, and so I think, you know, when you get to that point where it's, a you know, this, this big line to cross in your life and maybe, you know, like, you know, you've taken the advice of previous episodes and you've got your, you've got your village around you, you know, your people who are feeding into your, into your life and positively encouraging you and constructively, um, you know, engaging with you in a, in a good way. Um, that to them, maybe this line doesn't seem so big or to them, it seems massive. Um, but they've not, been on the journey you've been on yeah you know um and to get to to get to that river to get to that crossing they they are they're just seeing the moment where you're at right now mm -hmm. um and so i think it is easy for other people to maybe diminish it or to or to um maybe take it lightly or maybe even for other people to sort of freak out and go no this is too big this is too big for you to deal with yeah but actually, because you've, because of the journey you've been on, it's now just the natural next step. Oh, I like that. You I know? like that a lot. And and so in terms of like you know using the example of a firefighter, and you know that okay that is a serious thing, but they they are trained and that's what they do. If yes. it was if it was um, me or you walking down the street as a as a as a mere civilian, just a person as part of a town, and a house was on fire. And you make a decision to run in to save someone. I think that's a slightly different setting. Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, don't get, yeah. and I'm not, you know, like pff, firefighters, like you said, they do an amazing job, and I'm not diminishing them in any way. But they're trained; they're going in as a team, and they've also gallons and gallons of cold water backing them up as well. Um, so you know, like the odds are usually in their favour. Um, but the but if you were just as a mere citizen walking down and something's on fire. And you rush in to rescue someone, you know. What, even if you just did it on instinct, you still crossed a line of that where you know what what's the outcome? Well, it's either success or it's total failure. Um, but in terms of like, say, like you know, I don't know, you're at uni, you've got your degree, or you know, you, you've got this bit of paper that now says you're now qualified in a particular subject but you want to go off over here and do something else because whilst you've been at uni, you've joined a club <laughs> that's mm. kind of, or you've done something outside of that kind of education setting, um, that academic environment. And, and you've kind of fallen in love with that thing more. Yes. And you want to go and do that because it's, it's not necessarily about the, you know, the money printing machine goes brrr in your room. <laughs> it's about, it's about what you, what you're passionate about. 
Yes. And you're crossing a line that says, that's cool. I've got this bit of academia, but I'm going to go and do this instead. Yeah. You know, you, you're crossing that line. And it, and, and it may be that that's a line of no return because it may be the subject you study is so specialised that if you don't deal with it straight away, that it, it would be difficult to get back into. Um, so, you know, like, but to go off and do your own business or, you know, like even those guys who, I mean, some of them, you kind of, you sort of, you, you're cringing so hard. You think you're going to throw up when you're watching Dragon's Den and these people go on and they're presenting their their thing to the dragons, but yeah. they've crossed a line. You know, they're there <clears throat> stood in front of these people and, you know, and it's no wonder their minds go blank when they, when they're asked specifics about numbers and, <laughs> and, and projections and things like that, because you can, oh, you know, you, yeah. like, you know, deer in the headlights moment, but the, but you've crossed a line and there's no going back then because you've yeah. told everybody, this is my idea. Oh, I like that. Yeah. You've, you know, you, you, you've, you've made yourself vulnerable in a way you've crossed that line and now it's, it's, yeah. you're, you are in the spotlight for the whole world to see. Yeah. So to speak. And, yeah. And, and I think in, in those kind of settings, I think, you know, it's kind of, um, you know, and this is really going proper history nerd now. And I apologize to you and to your listeners uh, you know, in crossing that Rubicon and in going into that, it's important to know who your Mark Antony's are and who your Brutuses are. Yeah. Um, you know, someone who will support you unequivocally and someone who says they support you and then stick the knife in as soon as your back's turned. <laughs> you know, it's it's important to know who you, you know, who you've got at your at your back, if you like. Yeah. Even if they're not necessarily going into the business with you, but are gonna support you as a as a friend, as a as a confidant. Um yeah. you know, as someone who will just be a sounding board. Um, like, you know, I know that I've, I've, uh, one of the things I valued from you, um, is that I've been able to say things to you and knowing that you will just sit and listen because all I need to do is verbalize what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And, and, and finding a friend who can do that is, in, you know, is so valuable. Yes. Um, hundred percent who will just sit and listen just so you can say something out loud. Um, yeah. and I think, you know, that as well is another, is another small rubicon to cross you know verbalizing something yeah because you know it gets a different part of your brain thinking about it and enables you to see things differently and, and, and maybe um you know attack the problem differently or you know overcome the situation so i think you know there's the the there was a whole journey from gaul to that river that caesar made and it's kind of you know that that moment there that's the final moment but it was a big journey Mm. you know and i think we need to um we need to give ourselves the we need to be patient with ourselves to do the journey not just wish for the end product oh that's that's powerful i like that yeah everybody especially in the age of tiktok and prime delivery everybody wants something now they want the result now but they don't want the hard work that goes into it yeah yeah uh, it's interesting as well so uh something i've been following for some time is uh, a concept known as the hero's journey if you look at any sort of major piece of fictional writing or in some cases you know non-fiction with historical figures um there is this basic storyline of the hero's journey and i i cannot quote it because i've read it a few times but i can't quote it off the top of my head but essentially it's a sense of um average person goes on a journey at some point in the journey they face their own version of the Rubicon, massive self-doubt. This is the point in the movie where the person ha gets their ass kicked and they're questioning everything. And then they rise up, get up, get the, get the objective done, whatever the quest was. And then they arrive back to their hometown or their original destination as this new person who has grown through the journey, who has arrived finally at what they were meant to be in a, in a, in a way, harking back to our previous episode, self transcendence and the journey you have to go through to get that. And so, you know, self actualization being a byproduct of self tra self transcendence. So mm. in many ways, you know, you look at, you can almost see Rubicons everywhere. Now, actually, if you think about it, because if you look at pick your favorite historical figure, in fact, I'll think of one, um, a famous historical figure that I can think of where he had to cross a Rubicon, which affected whether people lived or died was probably Winston Churchill at the start of the second world war. You know, mm. the parliament had to make a choice. Do we 
do we look at the Nazi war machine and it, and go to peace terms, or do we declare war? Because that is all, there is no there is no half victory working with fascists and Nazis. Yeah. It's all or nothing. And obviously, then we know the outcome: five years of brutal war, and it was complete and total victory. But you know that that could have went so badly wrong. You know, Britain mm. could have been invaded. The world could have been occupied by Nazis. It's yeah. you know it was the stakes were so so high. Yeah, and I mean there were they, they, they were even training British soldiers to fight guerrilla warfare in Britain. Yeah, in the expectation of Britain being invaded and overrun. Yeah, you know, so like, um, yeah, it's it's unreal. So. It, so in that regard, um, I probably have like a couple of questions then for the audience and the like ident- in what is your Rubicon? Hmm. You know, I, you know, it's easy for us to chat here and I think we know each other's life stories very well. Hmm. Uh, but, you know, for our dedicated band of listeners, which thank you very much for sticking with us. Uh, we love you all. Yeah, it's there is a Rubicon in your life and you know what it is, because when you think about it, you get a knot in your stomach and you get a little bit, oh, I'm really uncomfortable thinking about this. It kind of gives you a little bit of the sweats perhaps. Um, And the other one is, you know, where are you in your hero's journey in that regard? Because if you look, it's a simple Google search, look up the hero's journey and you'll see the five or six points. And somewhere on that, you are somewhere in that journey. I've sent you a link on the WhatsApp for it. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I don't, I don't know if I, I don't know if I can look at it now and continue, no, no. continue to speak. But perhaps when you are, I'll have a quick look. Uh, <laughs> but the thing I want to, I, I, with all with this podcast, it's all very well and good listening, but I like this to be an action podcast. Yes. If you, if you're listening to this, fantastic, glad you're here. But really, we're here to challenge you, to help you grow, to help you become the best adult version of yourself so you know i feel like this is the point where you in a way this could be a rubicon listening to this podcast you've now you the information has now been made aware to you you've now got the choice to back down and go back to the your same habits your same lifestyle your same routines not getting the results you want and generally potentially being miserable or dissatisfied with life or now that you are aware that this information is here and the next part identifying your rubicon hmm. perhaps now is the time to choose to cross it or not you know you can decide whether it's one day or day one so you need to take action it's all it's all very well and good having the best mentors coaches you name it and advice but if you don't take if you don't take the action to do it in 10 years time you're still going to be where you are now and then wondering Oh well, whose fault was it? Well, newsflash, it's yours. Mm. But you, you know, in 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 the world of information and good people that there is now, despite what the media says, um, you know, it's a simple case of taking the action that you need to take that will improve your life, and and you know what you need to do, but you just need to get the minerals to do it. Yeah. And I know it's scary, but like. Mm. <laughs> look the you know if if it's really that scary as we me and nathan have said before find your little rubicons where the consequences are not that dangerous yeah cross yeah. your little rubicons and then eventually when you get to the main one you've been on your hero's journey and you can smash through it and you can yeah. march across it with um under a banner and a <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, and armed armed with good knowledge and who you are and your values and your and and what your goals are as well. I think that's yeah. a, a pretty good analogy. Don't go yeah. don't go running across rivers with swords and things and spanners. You know yeah. that but might I, uh, go on. I was just thinking that so like well recently like you know you you personally have done you personally have crossed a Rubicon haven't you with doing your stand up? Yes. Oh, for the audience who are not aware, yes, I did do. I have started stand up comedy. Yes, that was a. That was a, a Rubicon. If you ever, I, I wish I could have seen the insides. My stomach doing somersaults would have been quite the spectacle. But yes, that was a Rubicon. Yes. Yeah. And I think like, you know, the, and you know, you, you, your routine, because you sent me a little video of it, didn't you? Of yes. what you were doing. And, and you can see that you stand up and initially, you know, there's, there's fear and there's nerves, but there's a moment where you just kind of click into a groove. Yeah. 
and and it just starts to become and you think that like you know because you watch some of these like these comedians that like you know like some of my favorite ones like you know like so like bill bailey for example or mm-hmm. um or harry hill or ross noble um i'm probably showing my age anna but these guys <laughs> you know they're, they're up on stage and and they're they're just great but like i never saw them when they were in a pub being rubbish yeah yeah do you exactly. know what i mean like yeah you know, i've seen them because they've got a dvd out and they're on they're on Dave or, you know, <laughs> you know, or wherever they're on the BBC. And, um, but you know, but you don't see them, but I haven't seen them when they were in a pub the first time they stood up and tried to be funny. Yeah, um, exactly. And, and I think that, you know, like the, yeah, and, and how many of them do you hear like these people when they, you know, particularly like showbiz people and stuff like that. And they talk about the very first time they did this and I just bombed. Yeah. You know, and, I forgot the words or whatever. And then you go, but then I went back and did it again. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, because we're not, thankfully, at the minute, unless, of course, your Rubicon is like Caesar's was, we're generally not dealing with people with pointy sticks trying to stab us. Yeah. Um, whilst we have our own selection of sharp pointy sticks trying to stab them back, which is what Caesar was doing. Um, yeah. You know, so the, for the most part, our our personal now in, you know, in the time we live, the the outcome of our our crossing that Rubicon may be that someone laughs at us, but not in a good way. You're wanting people to laugh at you when you do your stand up, yeah. But the, you could also be laughed at negatively, mm-hmm. or you might, you know, if your thing is is starting your own business, that you might, you know, you might lose your investment, you might lose that money, but no one's going to stab you, hopefully, hmm. you know, hmm. for crossing your Rubicon, um, you know. So it's um, so I think, it, and, and I'm not trying to diminish it in any way. I'm not trying to diminish any anything that anyone's going through because, like you say, it is it is your personal hero's journey, and and your you know we we want the curious Ulster people to thrive and grow, and um, and become heroes. Um, but you know, like if the worst thing is is that someone's going to laugh at you, do it again. <laughs> yeah. No, a hundred percent. Yeah, I totally agree with that, Nathan. Um, something I would like to say is if you, if the audience would like us to do another series potentially on the hero's journey and each end of its individual steps, I think that would be a good potential series, Nathan. Um, yeah. But yeah. while we do want you to become heroes, everybody, at <laughs> uh, same time, referencing back to the previous episode, uh, I can't remember which one it was in our previous series, Nathan, but we talked about fighting for the man in your left. So yes. yes, fight for yourself, become a hero personally, but don't forget to fight for the man in your left. If you want to get that, if you want to get that reference, look at the previous series of coming into your own and you'll find it. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. So I think you can get the best of both worlds there. Yeah. So I think it's that time we talk about our actionable steps, Nathan. Um, so uh, unless you can come up with any more, I think the actionable steps that you know, the audience, and I'll say ourselves, because, you know, we're not going to ask the audience to do anything that we wouldn't do ourselves, is to identify your Rubicon. What is the main, what is that main point of no return in your life? It's all or nothing, complete victory or total failure. Um, And if you, as I said before, if you are struggling to identify, you know, we're not even identify that your Rubicon, you know what that is, because it, you know, it scares the living daylights out of you. Um, But if you're really scared about this particular Rubicon or this particular fear, you know, conquer the smaller ones first to build, you know, confidence is earned. It's not just freely given other people who are naturally potentially a little bit more confident than others. Yes. But at the same time, confidence is earned. Like the first time you got onto a bicycle, you were not confident. You had to earn that confidence to be good on a bike and then some people yeah. got super confident and went on super bikes doing 300 miles an hour around a corner, but you know, each to their own. Um, so <laughs> yeah, but 99% of getting good at anything is being consistent. So, you know, a, a total disclosure here on my first ever comedy set, I did forget part of my set about three quarters of the way through and I had to cut it short. It was still a 10 minute comedy set, which I'm really proud of, but it should have been probably closer to 15, but I complete. I, as you said, Nathan, people get up in the dragon's den and you're like, yeah, I'm going to nail this. And then suddenly you're in front of the dragons or a comedy audience and you're like, ah, 
I've forgotten my name. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, and as soon as someone heckles you as well, like you're like, oh. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Thankfully, I haven't had that rite of passage yet, but I'm ready. Uh, yeah, so get, the, get your little Rubicons out of the way if you have to. Yeah. Or in reference to our previous episode on courage, don't even think about it. Just, just cross that Rubicon, get it done. Think about it later. Use good common sense, folks. That little disclaimer, as always, don't be doing anything rash um, or illegal for that yeah. matter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, identify your Rubicon and in the process, cross the little Rubicons to get to it. And then your second actionable step is to get on the socials is to let us know what is your Rubicon and how you're going to cross it and you know what you're going to do because mm-hmm. it's all very well good crossing it and going yeah i crossed it and then having no plan on the other side you need you know yeah. um and also, and also if we can do anything to help you yes like, you know yeah obviously if this episode blows up in like three or four years and i'm getting like 100 dms a day i'm sorry i can't help you all i wish you all the best but i can't <laughs> help you all um and then the third actionable step uh is identify where you are on your hero's journey mm. so you everyone forgot who is alive on this planet is somewhere on their hero's journey it's either at the very start you could be halfway through or you could just be on the cusp of the rubicon or you could be just finishing your hero's journey having completed whatever adventure it was you've done or big decision you had to make so do that. And your fourth actionable step is to, again, get on the socials and let us know where you are in your hero's journey and how you're going to progress to the next stage and then come full circle. So yeah. that's the actionable steps for from me. What about yourself, Nathan? No, I think they're good. If I was to add anything, I'd just diminish your hard work there. <laughs> good. I don't know. I, anytime you speak, Nathan, I generally get smarter than I was before. So. <laughs> Uh, once again to our audience thank you so much for joining us on the curious Alsterman podcast apologies that there hasn't been an episode at the start of the year we've been very busy uh, but we are back the curious Alsterman podcast will be coming back weekly and as always open to any advice you have for us uh, a big thank you to nathan again for coming on the show as always it's been an absolute pleasure thank you i always enjoy being here thank you very much <laughs>